psychiatrist. Go talk to Llewellyn. Llewellyn studies in Zurich. I can't stand it. What am I going to do? I'm in some kind of a nightmare. Got to help me. Help me. Help me. Helen, go to your mammoth at all. complex is the human mind. It has been compared to the atom bomb, whose two elements, when kept apart, are perfectly harmless. So it is with the conscious and the subconscious of the human mind. Welcome back. How long was I asleep? About 40 minutes. Someone locked me in. Not someone. You. Don't remember that. subconscious didn't trust me. Sometimes even a sedative won't stop a reaction, a fear reaction. Doctor, if you never become better acquainted with my subconscious than that, we're in trouble. Why? You weren't afraid? Not of you. Calm, I can at least be accurate. I mean, I wasn't afraid of you. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, come on, Doctor. We're a team, aren't we? You've got to pull a little, too. If I'm not afraid of you, then what's left? Oh, don't call the nurse. I'm all right, really. I wasn't going to. Pardon me. Tape record. Unless you mind. Do as you please, I don't care. So, if you weren't afraid of me, I, I suppose you were afraid for me, is that right? I was in some kind of danger, in your opinion. Physical danger? Doctor. I've got to tell you something. And if you laugh at me, I don't know what I'll do. I wouldn't think of laughing. 
I was afraid I'd get so mad at you, I'd wish you dead and you'd die. Is it Miss Wadsworth or Mrs.? Come on, Doctor, do we have to go down that dreary road? I'm a normal, healthy woman. I love my mother and my father, and they love me. I get along very well with my employer. And that would be, uh... Mr. Alfred Ross, president of Alfred Ross Associates. He controls, oh, I don't know, eight or ten firms, including a fashion house. I'm the executive manager of that. There's an Alfred Ross who owns one of the major ball clubs. Same Ross. From dresses to baseball. Dresses, baseball, steel, real estate, motion pictures. Quite a range. Quite a man. Quite a man. I see you have a master's degree. Romance languages I studied in Paris. Is that where you became interested in uh, dress designing? No. I'd always liked it. Satisfying work, I imagine. Creative. It was. <laughs> I haven't designed for years now. Is the executive end of the business less satisfying? No, I don't think so. More pressure, surely. More decisions. More chance to lose your temper? More chance, far less excuse. I had a terrible temper as a child. I've worked very hard to control it. In all the years I can remember, I've only lost my temper twice. Once here. Once three weeks ago. And what happened three weeks ago? Someone died. Tell me. Tell me. It was a hot, sultry day. Like today. They were working on the air conditioning system. And we'd all brought fans to the office. As a rule, no one comes down on Saturday. That's why I was so surprised to find the fan on in my assistant's office. It aggravated me to find that someone else was there, too. I remember how the fan kept blowing some papers on her desk. I don't know why. I'm not usually so curious. But I wanted to see what she was working on. I picked up one of the papers. And I read it. It was a letter from Ross. This assistant, tell me a little about her. Joyce? Oh, not very attractive. Well. Well, well. It's like catching a big bright eye at the keyhole, isn't it? I want to congratulate you on your splendid ideas for our new fall line. What ideas? Why don't you read the rest of it? I didn't see any new ideas from you. You weren't available. Stop it. You weren't available. You've never paid any attention to my suggestions. If I had sent them to you, you'd have thrown them in the wastebasket like every other modern notion that crosses your desk. Well, 
This time I went over your head. Clear up to Al's penthouse? It's a lovely penthouse. As I told you last week, we've been contemplating a change in executive authority for some time. I wonder if you would be available for luncheon on the 31st. When we can go into this matter at greater length. The world turns, dear. If you can't hang on, then step off gracefully. Why, you vicious little slug. Get out. Right now. <laughs> My thick-legged little campus queen. Who do you think you're playing games with? Some child off the street? Get out! Well, I picked you up by the scruff of your dirty neck and I can drop you again. You've never seen the day when you can replace me around here and you never will. You know, Karen, you're very unattractive when you lose your temper. Why, you... Luncheon on the 31st. I hope you die before you get there. I hope you die. 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 I wonder what our man Freud would have to say about this. I think he'd be most interested and sympathetic. He'd say I'd lost my mind. Not in the least. But it happened. What happened? I killed Joyce Chapman. No. What happened was that Joyce Chapman died coincidentally with a a desire on your part to see her dead. You've constructed a, a guilt bridge between two unconnected events in order to punish yourself. I don't see that they're unconnected at all. Karen, suppose you were a, a little girl and I knew that an eclipse was due. And I told you to take a deep breath and try to blow out the sun. And you found you could. Wouldn't those two unconnected events make you feel guilty? I just feel like I've been some kind of a nightmare. The autopsy indicated she was probably dead before she hit the street. So how? We found a ruptured cerebral aneurysm at the base of the brain, the circle of Willis. It so happened that the skull was almost untouched. Well, of course, the aneurysm was indicated in her past history. Well, no. May I see this? But a artery just just doesn't suddenly dilate. Apparently, this one did. Any sign of prior injury or disease? I'm just telling you what we found, Doctor. Well, makes my job a little more difficult. Why? My patient believes she will, Miss Chapman did. What's this woman's background? General hysteria? No, no. Just the opposite. Intelligent, alert. Executive manager of a dress firm here. 
Alfred Ross Associates. Alfred Ross? Yes, why? Oh, nothing. Well, they have known Al Ross for 20 years, I guess. He was a fine man. He was? Yes, he keeled over on the golf course last night at 6 o'clock. Tragic. 49. That's too young. You sure you're the right man? Read in the paper today, and Alfred Ross was on TV last night. <laughs> they uh, taped that program a week ago. Oh. Coronary? I don't know. He'd uh, never shown any indication. Maybe your woman's been practicing her voodoo again, Doctor. Yes. Maybe. How do you feel? How do I feel? Like dancing. <laughs> I spent the weekend in the country. I haven't heard a telephone ring or read a newspaper. Or... Oh, I forgot. I did see a television show, though. You'll never guess who I saw. Who? Ross. I can't escape him. He's like Big Brother, you know? There he was, holding forth in his usual assured way. All about fashions, all wrong. And I suddenly realized that it wasn't just Joyce that was trying to put the knife in me. And I got madder and madder. And I saw that funny little smile. Like a, like a little boy, like a cruel little boy. I, I suddenly said, the wrong one died. And I got so scared that I couldn't look. But then he went right on talking, and when I did look, he was right there, alive as ever. And I knew it was all in my head. Now, do you know why I feel like dancing? When did this happen? Around six. Have you ever been hypnotized, Karen? Yes, I, I tell you, I am the best subject in the world. Fine, Every time fine. I... You lie down there. All right. Karen, concentrate on this pen. Think of nothing but the pen. Now close your eyes. Relax. Relax. Go to sleep. Karen, you told me that you've always been afraid of losing your temper. Tell me the first time you lost your temper. Karen, how old are you? Seven. Where are you? Attic. Are you alone? Donna. What are you and Donna doing? I let Donna try on the clothes in the trunk. But they were mine. You mean your mother's? Yes. It's my attic. She always has to have her own way. But I found the hat first. Why should she take it? It's my hat. Oh, I hate you. I wish you were dead. I wish you were dead, dead, dead. And she was dead. I'm sorry I had to put you through that, but we found the link we needed. Poor little girl. Which one? 
Can't you see that both of them were to be pitied? All your life, you believed subconsciously that you caused Donna's death. You didn't. Look at it now through adult eyes. You didn't shout her dead or a will her dead. It was an accident. You say that. It was an accident. It was. It was an accident. Nothing happened to Al Ross, did it? Did it? Karen. I'm going to tell you something because I don't want you to walk out of here and discover it yourself. Tell me what? Alfred Ross apparently had a heart condition. That's not true. Had a heart condition? He died last night. But I saw him afterwards on the television show. The program was taped. Oh, well, then it was my fault. No. It was, it was my fault. They were unconnected events. Oh, you can't still believe that. I can prove it. No. Karen, listen to me. Wish me dead. Oh, no. Wish me dead. No, leave me alone. Why won't you try? Are you afraid to try? Are you afraid it won't work? That you that you'll have to give up this fantastic superstition? No, no, no. It gives no. you a great ego gratification, doesn't it? it? Makes you feel like a god, doesn't it? That makes you feel great, doesn't it? That's why you won't test it, Karen. You've got to give up this crutch now. Karen, listen to me. Think of loyalty. Oh. Why is it always a one-way street oh. with you? Why can't you return it to your friends, your doctor, anybody? Oh, I know what you're trying to do. Listen to me. Look at me. I am not going to hate you. Say it. No. Wish me dead. No. No. Be quiet. Or what? You'll buy a wax doll and stick pins in it? You'll utter your abracadabra at me like a 20th century witch? No. Say it yourself and stop me. Say it. So tired, I wish I were dead. Cause of death, blank. I'm not going to write voodoo in that space, Mr. Newland. I'm a medical doctor. What are you going to write? Undetermined causes. You don't suppose it's possible that it could have been a psychic phenomenon? I mean, death by auto-suggestion. I'm a scientist. So was Louis Pasteur, who very nearly died of the same thing. Death by suggestion, also caused by a tragically disturbed woman. It's in the record. Yes, yes, I've heard of the case. We have a lot to learn, Mr. Newland. A lot to learn, indeed. What really happened to Karen Wadsworth? A series of cruel and bewildering coincidences? Or a few moments of hate and despair so enormous they could actually be felt by others? In the April 13, 1959 issue of Time magazine, a curious experiment was reported. Two rows of seeds were planted. The seeds were chosen from the same package, planted in the same earth by the same people, and cared for and tended equally, with one exception. The first row was prayed over. The second was cursed. The first row flourished. The second withered. <laughs> 